So it definitely fits into basic being able to automate the redundant, mundane types of tasks that anyone can do, right? So you, if you think about it, if you have a security operations center with five or 10 analysts, it might take one analyst to do a task, it may take them two or three hours, and where you can leverage a tool like Phantom, any type of store platform to actually create a playbook to do that task within 30 seconds. So not only are you, are you minimizing the amount of you know, headcount to do that, you're also you know, using your consistent tool to make that function, make that function you know, more, I want to say, enhanced. So you can build playbooks around it, you can basically use that on a daily basis, whether it's for security monitoring or network operations, reporting, all that becomes and the impact very is streamlined. Thank you. So what we do is we are a data analytics and intelligence nonprofit dedicated to countering all forms of human trafficking, whether it's labor trafficking, sex trafficking, or any of the subtypes, men, women, and children all over the world. So when you think about that, what that really means is that we interact with thousands of stakeholders across law enforcement, government, nonprofits, academia, and then the private sector as well. And all of those essentially act as data silos for human trafficking data. And when you think about that as trafficking as a data problem, or or you tackle it as a data problem, what that really means is that you have to have a technology and data-led solution in order to uh, solve the problem. So that's really our mission here, is to bring together all of those stakeholders, give them easy access to tools that can help improve their counter posture. Yeah, so like a day-to-day -day or like kind of what our team does is we focus on like what's going on previously, what are we seeing in the wild, like what campaigns are happening, and then my role within my team is focused on what's coming. So what are what are red teams working on, what are pen testers looking into, take that information, begin testing it, begin building proof of concepts, put that back into our product so that whether it's two weeks, six months, two years, we have coverage for it no matter what. Um, so a lot of us, a lot of our time is generating proof of concepts on what may be coming. So there's a lot of you know, very unique things that may be in the wild today, and then there's some things that we may never see that are just very novel and kind of once, once, in a, once a time kind of thing, right? I joined nine months ago, and when I was interviewing for the role, I remember Doug Merritt saying to me, hey, you, you know, we might be the only $2 billion enterprise software company that nobody's ever heard of. And he said, I want to go solve for that, right? Like the folks who know Splunk and our customers, they love us. Our product is awesome and our culture is awesome, but the world doesn't know about us yet and we haven't invested there. So I want to go take the brand to the next level and I want the world to understand what data use cases are out there that are so broad and so vast and we believe that every problem ultimately can be solved through data or almost every problem and we wanted to set the stage for that with this new brand campaign. Talk about the product, where are you guys at? You're using Splunk, you putting data sensors out there, you're leveraging existing data, both. Take us through some of the, you know, the nuts and bolts of what's going on in the product. Right, so part of it is building out some data sets. So there are some data sets that don't exist, but the government and the counties and the private sector have built out a huge corpus of data around where the buildings are, where the people are, where the cell phones are, where the traffic is. So we're able to leverage that information um, as we have it today. Um, um, the technology, we're using the Amazon stack. It's easy for us to spin up databases. It's easy for us to build out and expand as, as we grow. And then with Splunk, we're able to have it a place for all this real-time data to land and for us to be able to build APIs to pull it out very, very simply. We, we, when we say data everything, we really mean it. Uh, it's really, you know, it's a personal story for me. Uh, you know, I, I am on the government affairs team here at Splunk, so I manage our relationships with governors and mayors, and these are the issues that they care about, right? When the city's burning down, the mayor cares about that. The governor, this is, you know, one of the governor in California's major initiatives is trying to find solutions on wildfires. You know, I met Charlie, uh, my hometown, Arinda, California, our fire chief in that town was one of sort of the outside advisors working working with Charlie on uh, this idea, and we were, and I, I met him at a house party where the, the fire chief was telling me to trim my trees back and shrubs back, and then I was at a conference three days later, that same fire chief, Dave Winokur, was on a panel with like folks from a supercomputer lab and NASA and MIT. I was like, uh, you know, my fire chief's still the smartest guy in that panel, I got to meet this guy. A few weeks later, we were literally in the field doing these proof of concepts with sensors and data, super savvy folks, some of the other folks from CAL FIRE there, uh, you know, Jonathan Cox who was with us today here at, at, at yeah. CONF, uh, and 
and you know we've we've just been collaborating the whole time and seeing you know that that Splunk can really put some firepower power behind these guys, and we to see like look they've got the trust of these customers, and we need to make sure this idea happens. It's a great idea, and it's going to save lives. Yeah, data, the little small nuance, data to everything. Data to um, everything. And the reason behind that was we believe you can bring and we can enable our customers to bring data to every question, every decision, and every action to create meaningful outcomes. And the use cases are vast and enormous. We talked about some of them before the show started, but helping look, uh, global law enforcement get ahead of human trafficking through Splunk and Splunking what's going on across all sorts of data sources, right? Um, helping Zone Haven, which is our first investment from Splunk Ventures, which startup that's actually helping um, firefighters figure out burn burn patterns with wildfires, but also when temperatures and humidity change where sensors are, they can alert firefighters 30 to 45 minutes earlier than they would usually do that, and then they can also help uh, influence evacuation patterns. I mean, it's it's remarkable what folks are doing with data today, and it's really at the at the core of solving some of the world's biggest issues. So I'm glad you mentioned data, right? We're a data company and we're very proud that we actually post our diversity and inclusion numbers, right? So we moved uh, the needle 1.8% on gender last year, year on year. Um, proud but not satisfied. We understand that there's much more to diversity and inclusion than just gender. But our strategy is threefold uh, for diversity and inclusion. So it's workforce, workplace, marketplace. The first is around just what I talked about is improving our representation so that these women are no longer the onlys or in the minority that we're much more represented. And we're lucky, we have three women on our board, we have four women in our C-suite, so we're, we're making good, good progress, but there's a lot more to do. And as I say, it's not just about gender, we want to do we, we know that innovation is fueled by diversity, so we want to attract you know, folks of different race, different ethnicity, uh, folks who are military veterans, people with disabilities. We need everyone at Splunk to be successful. The important thing to think is, you know, the things you mentioned, the, the, the vulnerability scanning, the intrusion detection, those are all still important in the cloud. I think the key thing that the cloud offers is the fact that you have the ability to now automate and integrate your security teams more tightly with the things that you're doing. And you can actually, we always talk about the move fast and stay secure. Customers choose AWS for the self-service, the elasticity, the price. Um, and you can't take advantage of those unless your security can actually keep up with you. So the fact that everything is based on an API, you can define infrastructure as code. You can actually enforce standards now, whether it be before you write a line of code in your DevOps pipeline, or actually being able to detect and react to those things all through code and in a consistent way, really allows you to be able to look at your security in a different way and, and, and take the kind of philosophy and mindset you've always had around security, but actually able to do something with it and, and be able to maybe do the things you've always wanted to do, but have never had a chance to do. So I think, I think the security can actually keep up with you and actually help you different your different differentiate your business even more than maybe it did. So new the, the acquisition has, has been extremely, uh, you know, uh, exciting for us. Uh, you know, after meeting Marcus, uh, I've known of Marcus. He's a very positive influence in the community. Uh, but having worked with him, the vision for threat care and the vision for Quest really closely aligned. So, where we want to take uh, the future of security testing, testing controls, making sure upstream controls are working, uh, where threat care wanted to go for that was very much with what we align with. So it made sense to to partner up. So, uh, very excited about that, and I think we'll, we'll roll that into our gray matter platform as another capability. We really see the product evolving the same way that you see a lot of the portfolio overall. So Doug has talked a lot about investigate, monitoring, analyzing, and act, right? And so those same concepts apply into how you think about a process as well. So right now we're really helping the investigation and monitoring, but we'll also continue to extend across that spectrum with time. A lot of cloud services, microservices, observability, a big part of all this. Yeah, definitely in how we've built the product, but also um, I think it can sit alongside some of the other things that you're also seeing in that realm. So I think the thing to understand is, um, yeah, correct, we're not just a security company, but we are number one in the security magic quadrant. We're number one in both IDC and Gartner, and so that's important. But what happens is all of the data that you collect for security can also be used for all these other use cases. So generally speaking, whatever you're collecting for security is also valuable for IT operations, and it's also valuable for many other use cases. So I'll give you an example. 
Domino's, um, which is a great customer of ours, um, they've gotten 65% of their orders now come in digitally, okay? And so they monitor the entire end-to-end -end customer experience, but they monitor it not only from an IT operations perspective, that same data that they use for IT operations also tells them you know, what's being ordered, what, what special orders are being made, and they use that data for promotions. Based upon volume and traffic and timing, they actually create promotions. So now you're talking about the same data that you collected for security and IT operations, you can actually use for promotions, which is marketing. Um, it's a great intro on uh, data is awesome, but we all have data to get to decisions first and action second. Without an action, there is no point in, in gathering data. And so many companies have been working their tails off to digitize their landscapes. Why? Well, you want a more flexible landscape, but why the flexibility? Because there's so much data being generated that if you can get effective decisions and then actions, that landscape can adapt very, very rapidly, which goes back to machine learning and eventual AI type, type opportunity set. Um, so that is absolutely squarely where we've been focused, is translating that data into value and into actual outcomes, which is why our orchestration automation piece is so, uh, so important. One of the gating factors that we felt has existed is for the Splunk Index, and it's only for the Splunk Index, um, the uh, pricing mechanism, mechanism has been data volume. And that's a little bit contrary to the promise, which is you don't know where the value is going to be within data. Yeah. And whether it's a gigabyte or whether it's a petabyte, why shouldn't you be able to put whatever data you want in to experiment.